Back at y'all with part four. Let's get right to it. Once again, if you haven't already subscribed, please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Now let's get right to it. Okay, so San Diego County Jail. A big difference from L.A. County Jail. That's not a knock on San Diego County Jail, but the L.A. County Jail is probably the worst county jail in the state of California. I think most people will agree with that. Uh, but San Diego County Jail was really nice compared to L.A. County. We went through there. We had uh, free phones. They let you get emails and all that old kind of stuff in there. L.A. County didn't do none of that. Uh, <clears throat> it was clean. L.A. County is like a damn, it's like downtown. It's downtown L.A. It's like downtown L.A. Like Skid Row in there. Like it's straight filthy, nasty in that joint. But again, San Diego County Jail was way nicer than that. The whole process to get processed into the county jail was a smoother process than L.A. County also. So <clears throat> anyway, I get processed in. Uh... I'm talking to her because we have these free phones, so I'm calling her all the time. You only can use a free phone for like 619 area code, I think. I think the other area code was like 85, something, something like that. But only the only you can use that free call within San Diego zones or only. So we talking, we, you know. Now what we're doing is we're planning to do this. We're planning to get married. So now I got her calling uh, notary people. We're trying to track down all these different people so we can go ahead and get married. So anyway, I, I'm in the San Diego County Jail. I'm down here for two weeks. While I'm down there for two weeks, she managed to come down to the county jail with the notary people, and we get married behind the glass right there in the county jail. So now we're married. Now just think back on this whole story. We met her in the prison when she was working there. We got caught. I've been in the hole for like seven months. Now I'm down here in the San Diego County Jail. Now we're getting married. Now... After I get married, they uh, they realized they didn't even need me for this case. So that's why I was only down there for two weeks. They didn't need me. Uh, they never even talked to me about nothing. The little homie, he went through with the, uh, the little, uh, whatever he had to go through, the, the, uh, <clears throat> whatever his situation, he had to deal with that. But he stayed down there. So after two weeks, I was sent back to Donovan. So now I'm back in Donovan. And now we're married. So I feel like I'm the shit. You know, I know a lot of people didn't crack these females up in this place, but nobody never married one. I'm the only one ever done some shit like that. So I'm feeling like I just set a record as far as inmates cracking uh, staff members. So I get back. I'm getting processed in. I got to go through the reception yard, go through all that old stuff. Then they send me back to the hole. So in the process where I'm going through, I'm seeing people I know. And they're like, hey, man, what's up? I thought you was in the hole still. I'm like, yeah, I am in the hole. I just come back from court. And I just told, I had to put it out there. I got I married her, bro. <laughs> I just let her be known. So you know the word travel all around the prison. He married her now. He married her. They was already mad because they didn't catch me in no contraband. They didn't catch me doing nothing with her. So they was already pissed off. So now I'm in the hole. Now they find that I'm married. So now here they come. Once I make make it back to the hole, they put me back in another cell. I'm back over here. Now I got a squad ISU coming to the cell door, asking questions. A uh, lot of different staff members asking questions. They just now, it's like, you know, they pissed in a sense, but they just looking at me like now, it's like, okay, I'm on a shit list with some of them. But certain ones was keeping the player. So as you say, you know what I mean? They was keeping real respect for They was like, you know, maybe you did that. You know what I mean? You did that. I ain't mad at you. If I was in your shoes, I'd try to knock something in here too. Most people in prison, I mean, that work in the prison say that. Most people that work in the prison say the same thing about having a cell phone. If I was in here, I want a cell phone too. Of course. Of course, if you was a man in the prison, you got female staff coming there, you see them coming there, you're going to want to holler at something. Of course. It's, happens, it's the opposite in women's prison. So that's just life, you know what I mean? So anyway, I'm back at Donovan. Um, still in a hole, pending transfer up north. They got, like I said, they got wind by me telling some people that I married this girl now. So now they pissed off. The racial thing is coming into play because she was Mexican and some of these Mexican uh, free staff and staff members, COs, used to try to holler at her. They used to always talk about her Iraq up here and all this old stuff. But she wasn't messing with none of them. So it's like once they found out, oh, this nigga cracked her, fuck him. You know what I mean? I couldn't get her. She chose him over. You know, they was already pissed certain ones. So what they start doing, uh, they was letting us get some property back there in the hole, certain stuff we can get back there. Then they give you an inventory sheet, let you know 
all the property that you have uh, that came out your sale, what they do with it. I was missing so much stuff. I just looked at my inventory sheet. It was just so much stuff missing. And I didn't even realize what I thought was just missing. It was way more than that. And I didn't realize that till I got sent to Corcoran. So what they did was I came back from the court. I'm back here in Donovan in the hole. Uh, at the, at the, I'm writing all these 602s, these appeals to the warden and, and the, uh, the head uh, director uh, Department of Corrections in Sacramento. I'm letting these people know I'm back here in this hole. It's been seven months. I'm only back here for over familiar with staff. You're only supposed to be in a hole 30 days for something like that. I'm back here for like seven months. So I finally get transferred. I get sent to Corcoran. So now I'm in Corcoran. I finally get my property. They didn't broke my TV up. The, you can see somebody didn't kick the whole front screen of the TV. I had a lot of stuff missing. Headphones was broke. Uh, books had stuff spilt all on my books. And, you know, it's like, damn, you know, they just, they just like did everything wrong. So I went through the whole process again of filing another appeal from up there to Sacramento just so I can get my property back. So now I'm in Corcoran. Me and Sarah's married. So now we can do the things that uh, all the, the average person that's in prison do that's married. We can get the conjugal visits now. So here we go. She coming up there maybe like every 90 days about that. No, at first it was like it was bagged up. So it was like about 120. And well, we was going out there to the trailer for two days. So it was three days, two nights. Yeah, three days, two nights. It was cool, you know, we went through that process, it was good. She finally found another job. Um, and in the process of finding another job, she found another dude. She didn't tell me that, of course, but I figured it out eventually. So uh, now, you know, I'm, I'm noticing the signs in her, you know, the, the changes. Uh, the visits and stuff is slowing up. The, uh, I'm calling her now, it's like I can't get through. I had a cell phone, I'm calling her. She hanging up the phone like, oh, she just all of a sudden went to sleep. I got a cell phone. I can call you all night. But, you know, all these things is going on. I'm like, wait a minute. What's she doing? <laughs> I'm going through this shit. What's she doing? Why she not answering the phone? I'm in the cell. Like, what's the bitch ain't answering this phone. You better answer this mother. You know, and, you know, she got all these excuses, these lies. Oh, well, I had to put the kids to sleep. All this so shit was going on. You know, I'm just being blind because I'm caught up into the lust of have this the, everything that happened with me and her from the beginning the whole excitement of how I cracked her she was a staff member now I got her running up here we're getting family visits we, everything's legit so I'm riding that psychic so she doing bullshit I see it but at the same time I'm like you know what I ain't tripping <laughs> I'm like she's still coming up here I ain't tripping man this girl came up here one time on a family visit Everything was normal. <laughs> a couple of days later, I got chlamydia. Yeah, she did that to your boy. So she burned me up. So I'm in prison. I'm going to the infirmary. <laughs> I got to go up there and talk to these nurses. <laughs> they like, how you get that shit? They like, how you get that shit in here? Like I was on the conjugal visit, yo. <laughs> White boxers once again. You know, <laughs> green stains in my shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? So I go straight to the nurse. They tell me, you got chlamydia. Yeah, and <laughs> she burnt your boy while I was in prison. But it wasn't over yet, though. We got a tour over that. And I stayed with her ass. <laughs> I stayed with her ass. I was like, still just like, you know, Cause she's still trying to come see me and everything. I'm just like, well, you know, when you're in prison and you don't have nobody, you just feel like some some of us sometimes feel like we just gonna accept whatever a lot just to deal. Cause we in here and we just you know shit people can put us through. Cause we got family members and homies put us through a lot of bullshit and we still stick by it. Forget them. Like homies and done some scandalous shit. Family members and done some scandalous shit. So now you got a woman that's trying to run for you. She gonna do what she do. You in prison, a woman gonna, she got needs. So every man, we supposed to know that. 
which I did know that. I'm like, okay, she's gonna do what she do, but it's how she do it. I mean, you don't you don't be just like dissing me on the phone, trying to call you, You'd like tell that nigga to wave, whoever you fucking with. You don't come up here and give me no disease either. So we we went through it for a while. I was up in Corkin for like a whole year. Then my points dropped, and I transferred from Corcoran, and I went down to CRC, Norco, California. So CRC, Norco, California, of uh, California Rehabilitation Center, that's what that stands for. So there was a level two prison. I haven't been to a level two prison since I was like 18, 19, back in the 80s. So this is gonna be a first for me to go down here. Because most of us that's been in higher level prisons don't really want to go into a low level because the low level's got a lot of knuckleheads, a lot of kids, these young dudes coming here, they don't understand structure, they doing stupid shit. Uh, it tend to be a lot more riots in the low level prisons than the higher level prisons because they have less structure. The higher level prisons, we have more structure and be like, okay, we can, we work things out. We can talk. We can communicate because you're dealing with a lot of lifers. Here it is. CRC was a prison that no longer had lifers. Everybody there was under 10 years. So here I come. At this time, I think I had been down like 15 years at the time. And I had like six more years to do. So now I'm coming down here uh, just to get back to Southern California. It's a level two. And I had level two points, so I couldn't stay in Corcoran no more. So I had to get up out of there. So like I want to get away from Central California anyway. I'm like, let me get the fuck back down here. So here I am. I'm here. I get off the bus. When you get off the bus, you end receiving and releasing, which is R and R. Every prison got that. Every prison when you first get there, you go to R and R and you leave there, R and R. So when you get off the bus, they take the chains off of us. We had the waist chains, the ankle chains, and be in that red overall jumpsuit, coverall jumpsuit. So they got us all just in the tank waiting for them to, you know, get everybody in and unload the property. Then eventually start calling us to the desk one at a time, fingerprinting and doing all this old physical stuff that we normally have to go through when you arrive in a new prison. While I'm in there, here comes ISU, Goon Squad, once again, with a lieutenant from, and a lieutenant, yeah. It's Goon Squad, a lieutenant, and I think a sergeant. They asked me to step out the cell. They take me to the back room. Now, people that go to uh, prisons, a lot of times, if you got, like, some serious stuff on your your file, like the stuff you've been involved in, and you go into a softer level prison, the softer level prisons tend to uh, overreact, to think you're coming down here for some politics or something like that. So they pull me back there. First thing off, off top, they start they talking about the situation with me and Sarah and Donovan. And then, of course, I had life. Of course, I done been in Pelican Bay and Calipatras and Folsom's and all these other prisons. So somebody like myself coming down here where it's a bunch of these young kids that's down here, like first-termers in here. A lot of them is drug offenders. They not, they not the type of people what I've been living around. I've been living around murderers, you know what I mean? Just people who got life and just just then killed up a bunch of shit. So now I'm coming down here, these dudes got drug cases. So the prison itself is alert. Watch out for this dude, because somebody like myself can come down and politic. We can start coming down here and trying to make changes. That happens, that happens a lot. So anytime somebody like myself get off the bus, they are gonna snatch us out the cage, come in here and they make their threats. But they tell me, if you come down here politicking, you should throw some drama down there, we'll get your ass up out on the first thing smoking. And if you try to get at any of our staff members, we won't get your ass out here first thing smoking. But hey, I was just down here to do the last six years of my time. I didn't want to be in no damn dorm living either. I preferred to stay in a cell. I'd be like just me and one person instead of being in a whole fucking dorm with a bunch of idiots. I mean, well, you know, people that's young, that's, that's just still fucking up on drugs and shit, which that's what was happening. You got people in here on drugs and these are the prisons where most of the riots happen at the low levels because they have less structure and be a lot of people fresh off the streets they don't know what we know 
myself and people like myself who've been doing time because we've been doing this so we like hold up we deal with things differently the people fresh off the streets they coming in there with a trying to make a name for themselves and they only got as we call it wine no time two and three years we call that wine no time if you ain't in no double digits you know doing time you know get your little ass on over there you know me like i said i had 70 to life and i knew the homie from compton the homie strawberry from compton from the south side to be exact a nigga had like 646 years to life i don't know what to deal with bro i don't know if he made it out he went back on the pill or not but i don't know we was fighting our case together in compton court 646 years to life i had 70 to life and he told me, get a couple more years. Step your years up before you come over with me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, right. So I'm free, though. <laughs> I'm out here. I hope the homie's free, too. I don't know where he at. But, yeah, that's the kind of time they're giving out in L.A. County. At least they was back in the 90s. So anyway, I'm down here. It's a level two. Uh, they were hating on me, too. They didn't want me to get family visits with this woman. They knew the history. It's all in my C file. They can see everything they know. When I first got there, my counselor, everybody knew. So they found reasons to say, we're not letting you get them. So I had to go ahead and file another appeal. So that's the thing about prison life. You got you do a lot of filing appeals on a lot of stuff if you care. Because they will get over on you. They will take stuff from you. They will fuck over you. And most people be like, I don't feel like writing no fucking 602. I don't got time for that shit. No, write that shit up. File that shit up. Because I know cats who play the, the fucking lawsuit game in prison. Any little thing they get, they going to file a lawsuit on their ass. And I've seen cats get thousands from the state while doing life in prison because they slip and fail or some bullshit because they didn't have the proper cones up right here in this area. When you walking through the child hall, and I know homies like, I'm finna bust this move. And boom, oh, shit, I'm bound. And be like, okay, and played them and won. So prisoners, uh, convicts, there's a difference. The difference is the mentality, the inmate, the convict. I'll break that down for y'all another time. But the convict people, the people with the convict mentality, is not going to lay down and s accept uh, the things that they do to us. Uh, unjust behavior, unjust treatment towards humankind. So we tend to file 602s for filing, which is also called appeals. So I had to go through that process in order to get my family visits. I did. I finally won. It took months. I was there down there about almost a year before I finally got a family visit. And I think I got one, maybe two with her. And then, you know, she was continuously messing with that same cat. And it just got to a point to say, you know what? I got back with my high school, junior high school sweetheart, and I said, fuck her, and the game is over. 